Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Welcome. You're listening to Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. My name is Promise, and we are so glad you could join us. Before we get into the Word, let's open up in prayer. Lord, I thank you for today, Lord. I thank you for providing for our every needs, Lord, and giving us a clear vision of what we need to do in order to succeed in life, Lord, and be pleasing in your sight, Lord. Lord, I also just thank you for giving us your Son, Jesus Christ, and showing us the perfect example of how we should be, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. So glad to have you with us this morning as we continue our study in First Thessalonians and grow in our faith, learning how to stand, actually wage war, right, as the, as the example given in First Thessalonians. So this morning we are continuing in chapter 5, and we're still discussing verses 12 through 22. So whether it's your first time joining us or you're rejoining us, I'd like to encourage you to pause the episode at this time, just read through that section of scripture, and that way it'll be easier to follow along in the discussion. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. And now the floor is open to give each of you the opportunity to share what Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you and ask any questions that you have. So who would like to begin? I would. All right, honey, honey. I wanted to um, talk about verse 14 um, that Layla, you referenced in the previous episode. And I really enjoyed this verse um, because it, it tells you some, you know, sometimes as a believer, you don't know how to interact with others around you. It, and this verse tells you how you should um, perceive the different circumstances you might find yourself in when it comes to a brother or sister in Christ. Um, you know, if you, as you're walking, we were, we were told before to mind our own business, huh. um, <laughs> back in chapter four, um, that we aspire to lead a quiet life and to mind our own business and to work with our own hands or work with your own hands. Sorry. Let me read that the way it's written, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. And then here he's saying in verse 14, now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. And it, it might seem like a contradiction in, in the two different verses that there's a contradiction between how you should behave. And really it's not. It's telling you how to set your temperament in verse four, which is not trying to rule over other people and make sure they don't sin, but then you give yourself a pass and you don't ensure that you are not the one sinning. And at the end of your time on this earth, my time, any human being's time on this earth, they will stand before their Lord and Savior to to be judged and whether it's the great white throne judgment or them putting off their tent and it being a judgment of whether you will be entering into heaven or proceeding into hell. Um, there is a judgment, a rendering of the, um, the Lord's response to your works and your time here in the earth, whether you did what he asked you to do and he can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Or he says, depart from me. I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. That is, um, different how we set our disposition to function and to be honorable to our God. And then as we come in contact with brothers and sisters in Christ, we're not there to rule over them mm -hmm. and control them. The fruit of the spirit is self-control. So we are to control ourselves. And as we walk with them, this is how we should interact with them. If we find ourselves in certain circumstances or conditions, um, if you are, you know, on your work with the Lord and you're walking with him and you're doing those things that have already been articulated to us in chapter four of first Thessalonians, and you're being obedient to the Lord and you're seeking to just honor him with your activities. And you see that your brother is behaving in an undisciplined way, or he's struggling and he's crying out for help, or he's weak in some way, or he is faint 
and faint hearted in some way that you can know how to respond appropriately. You know, if you come across somebody who's faint hearted and then you become disgusted because you're like, well, why are you getting ready to fall apart? What's the big deal? I don't understand. And you address that brother or sister in Christ harshly versus um, gently. It could have a negative effect on that believer. Ultimately, as a believer, we're all responsible for our own responses and our own um, choices that we make. However, as me being a brother to, or I mean, a sister to another brother or sister in Christ, I am responsible to at least not throw a stumbling block in their path, at least not be a hindrance to them so that they can get where they need to go. So I just appreciate that. And I, I often enjoy how the word of God speaks to us based on where we are. There are times where for you, Layla, what was the part of that verse that stood out to you? Um, let me see. It was comfort the faint hearted, uphold the weak. Which can be particularly grating when you're on your way to try to accomplish a goal. Right? <laughs> well, yes. And then you're like, ah, you know, you're slowing me down, whoever you are. You are um, interfering with me getting done with my work so I can please the Lord and I can go ahead on my journey to accomplish what I'm looking for with Christ Jesus. And I, I, I snickered when you said that initially, because I, knowing your personality, I see that this is a part that is particularly grating for you, but, and not just you, but anybody, it, it can be grating, but just because I know you, I know why you picked out those sections and the instruction that God gives us, it helps us to view ourselves, but also know how to um, interact with others from who we are internally and the growth that's taking place in us, the maturing. That's what I mean by that. The maturing that's taking place on the inside of us. So I just appreciated that, um, that part of this. And also when it comes down to, um, back to verse 15 through 22, those hard and fast, just helping you look at where you are. If I look at these things and I go, man, I sure have been complaining. It says, rejoice. I sure have been complaining. It's a quick check mark or not check mark, but a, a quick, um, calibration. Am I doing this or am I not doing this? And, um, or if someone is doing something to me, am I tempted to pay them back? Am I having to, you know, wrestle myself and am I being sidelined because it's so tempting for me to react or respond in a way that is a, a natural, a carnal response to, or reciprocation to what they're doing to me. So someone's stepping on my foot. Am I like, Oh, let me bite my knuckle real quick because I'm going to go stomp on yours and I'm going to find the biggest pointiest boots I can find. And I'm with, with spikes on the end and I'm going to come and and dance on both of your feet. Is, Is that what my perspective is? Is that how I am functioning on the inside? This, this section here is really a clarifier of your thoughts and what's happening on the inside. Am I doing these things or am I not doing these things? Is this coming first response to me to behave like what's articulated here in the scripture? Or is it something I've got to go dig out of the treasure chest, but all the things that come out as a first response are ungodly or unloving. They're not being patient. They are wanting to return evil for evil. And I have to struggle to consider what's good for someone else and not just think about myself. You know, it, it really helps to put it in a succinct perspective so that we can go, Oh, I'm not doing that. Okay. I am doing this one. Huzzah. Thank you, Jesus. But that one, (laughs) Ooh, I struggle with. And to be honest with ourselves, because at the end of the day, if I impress you by seeing pious and holy, it's, that has no bearing on my actual effectiveness. It has no bearing on how I look before our Lord and Savior. It has no bearing on my ability to stand and endure. All it says is I'm able to impress someone who's looking on the outside. That natural yes, things. And, and temporarily <laughs> and for a moment. But if our Lord is not pleased, what does it matter? It holds no weight. Um, and sometimes when you read through other sections of scripture, this is the word of God is always present. God's character and his nature never changes. However, when you get to see it, the way it's presented here, it makes it like, oh, 
okay, okay. <laughs> I don't have to, you know, read it and, or it's um, implied or um, it's an undertone of what's there, but this is clearly stated and it's just very direct. And I just appreciated that. I love that you brought up that verse again, because if we look at it, it follows the verse concerning or the two verses concerning leadership. And just to, um, as a reminder for us, since we studied Hebrews, right? Hebrews was looking at developing or building the unshakable faith, right? Mm -hmm. After we've come into alignment, Mm -hmm. uh, in chapter 13, uh, verses seven to 17, say this in Hebrews. In Hebrews, yes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. And then verse 17 says, Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you, right? So as as you were discussing there, honey, honey, verse 14 follows that. And and oftentimes, natural, carnal-minded people like to point out, whether it's their parents, whether it's those in, in the church, in the body that have been given a position and authority by the Lord, mm-hmm. and look at all the flaws and all the ways they're not doing something right. Mm-hmm. But what's happening here is the mirror is being held up. Are you, am I, right? And you for yourself and me for myself, are we truly operating in the love of God, whether that's towards those that are our peers or that are our younger siblings in the Lord Mm -hmm. and towards our older siblings in the Lord? Mm -hmm. Are we holding ourselves to the same standard that we are holding others to? Mm -hmm. Or because... No, those that are given authority over us should not grieve being an authority. You're making it difficult for them mm-hmm. by your conduct, which is what he's getting at here, right? It's and, and whether it's in Hebrews or here in Thessalonians, he's like, hey, get yourself together. Look at examine yourself so that it's easy for everyone around you to function and operate in what the Lord has for them, not making it grievous. Mm-hmm. But then also as we were reading in verse 17, he gets down the core of it. It's unprofitable for you Mm -hmm. because how will you then be able to receive the fullness of the instruction, the wisdom, the guidance, the counsel, and all those things that the Lord has for you if you are fighting and biting and kicking and screaming and all the rest of it Mm -hmm. in order to not receive the instruction. But then we have the audacity to then say, oh, yes, we're, we're mature in the Lord. Mm-hmm. How can that be? It's an impossibility. It can't be both. So I love that he's saying, hey, yeah, ex- examine the leaders, right? Examine their conduct. What's mm-hmm. the outcome of their conduct, uh, right? It, are mm-hmm. they living what they're saying? But also now he puts it on each individual. Are you living what you're professing in mm-hmm. Christ? Mm-hmm. And And then there's the... Well, it's not, again, not a checklist, but here are some practical things that will show up in your life that demonstrate your love for the Lord and that you're walking in him. Are these things part of the the daily structure in your life? Or is it a struggle and a challenge to do them? Mm-hmm. It also tells you where you should be putting your effort. Like, exactly. are you striving to do these things? Because none of these things are second nature to a carnal person. Like Mm -hmm. these are all things that are foreign to just the natural man. Absolutely. They're absolutely foreign. And the opposite is they render evil for evil. They are self-serving and self-seeking. They complain all the time. They don't pray. They're not thankful. They are always quenching the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They despise the things of God. And they believe any lie that comes to them, right? And they run away from and shy away from what is good. And they are indulged in 
every evil thing. So, and I'm not saying they as it's some, some mysterious person. I mean, any person who's not a believer, which I myself was this person at one time, that's what my life looked like. And so when I came into Christ, yes, I was learning about the Lord and learning to shun evil and sin and things of that nature. But to have a clearly focused, here are the the objectives and the trajectory that I should be going in because it's not second nature when you first come into Christ Jesus and you are undeveloped in the, the kingdom of God, it's not second nature. So to have it clearly stated so I can go, okay, this is what I should be doing and then compare it to what I'm actually doing Amen. and then actively while I'm cultivating the love of Jesus Christ in my life, actively go, okay, I just heard my mouth complain, stop complaining, start blessing and praising the Lord, start thanking him for what's going and look to see the good that the Lord is providing. I had to learn how to do that. And I had to continuously learn how to do that. But without a, a clearly identifiable, um, focus point, it was hard for me to gather that because like Mm -hmm. I, I pointed out to Layla, when we read the scriptures, we typically read from where we are right now. Like when we receive from the word of God based on what we need at this moment, it may not always be, here's where you're going. Like this is your end point. We may not always get that, even though it's provided in the word of God, God is always talking Mm -hmm. about, here's the end outcome. He works the end. He he goes to the end, declares the end from the beginning. He's already stated what will be before it ever happens. But humans, especially coming out of um, the world and coming into Christ, don't always know what that looks like. And so without clearly stated, clearly identifiable um, objectives and goals that we are to strive for, it can be easy that for a Christian to be saved and yet remain carnal. And it's just because they don't know what they're supposed to be doing. They haven't yet been discipled or they haven't been cultivated in the things of God. And that is not any external person's responsibility. You got to get in the word for For yourself. yourself, You are responsible for that. But I'm just saying, having it clearly identifiable, I know in my early days, it certainly helped me. And even now, as I go back as a seasoned believer, I go back and go, okay, how am I doing on these things? Let me, let me examine myself and give a, give myself a checkup just to make sure that, you know, as I am pouring into other people and leading other people and the things of God, I myself am not growing slack and faint hearted on these things because it is a concise description of here are the things that you will see coming out of your life if you are holding fast to what God is doing for you. So this is for the new believer and the the, the mature, skilled, right. <laughs> skilled believer as well, though, the mature believer. Amen. And so let's also understand the why, right? Because we talked about the what. And, this is the what should be showing mm-hmm. up in our life, in our daily life. Mm-hmm. But the why is this. You should be being prepared at all times for the next, I'll say, position. of what, Whether it's in leadership or otherwise. right? We are being prepared. We're being raised up, trained up, right? or make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Well, the people prepared for the Lord, they themselves are in in alignment with the Lord. They themselves are reflecting Christ. But then they're also able to do, like Christ, bring about reconciliation, lead others to him, and help develop them in their walk, teach them, train them, raising them up. They're, I'll say, newfound brothers and sisters in the Lord, those that are spiritual infants. Bringing them, well, it's the Lord that truly brings them through the process. But why can't the Lord use you to you know, work in and through you in your life to help raise up the next generation or, or anyone else for that matter, right? So that they can be conformed to the image of Christ. And for a parent and a child, yeah, in the Lord, guess what? They are both brothers and sisters in Christ. One is older than the other and has been given greater responsibility. Can you be trusted with that responsibility? Are you demonstrating that you're prepared? All right, and and <laughs> our children in this room, they're they're looking at us like, oh yeah, because wait, each of you, regardless of age, has been put in leadership over the others, right? Yes. Yes. When did that happen? When we demonstrated that we were able to handle it. Okay. And if you dem- if you did not demonstrate that you were able to handle that role and that responsibilities that come with it, 
Then what happened? Demotion. Pink slip. Okay. <laughs> Someone else that was demonstrating got the opportunity, right? Yes. Okay. You think that's any different with the Lord? No. No. Did it happen immediately or was there a fine tuning, right? Were there opportunities to correct the behavior uh, or to come into alignment with the standard and what was required? There were opportunities. Okay. But when we refuse, then okay. Now there's got to be something else that happens, right? Yes. So it's no different for us. And that was just a natural example. But even for us in the Lord, especially for us in the Lord, are we demonstrating our faithfulness to him through every area and aspect of our life? And can he utilize us in those roles, in those places? Isn't that what he says about leadership? He's like, hey, who, he who desires to be an elder, right? Desire is a great thing. Yes. But then yes. what? What does he say? But he must manage his own household well first. Okay. Well, we are also, yes, of the household of faith, but we are a temple. Your, your body is a temple of the living God. So are we managing that well? And when we manage that well, then we will be those individuals that are prepared, a people prepared for the Lord, that are standing up, that are able to conduct spiritual warfare, to stand for the Lord in faith and enforce or guarding and governing the victory that's already come in and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot in there. We're going to pause there for today. With that, can I get a volunteer to close this out in prayer, please? I will. All right, promise. Lord, I thank you for today, Lord. I thank you for giving us your natural beauty and allowing us to see what you want us to see, Lord, and giving us your perspective, Lord, so that we may be perfect inside of you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. And amen. Well, we love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. Want to know more about a day of prayer? Sign up for our newsletter where you'll get the latest updates on the ministry, inspiring messages, and coupon codes for the merch shop. Visit our website, adayofprayer.org. Click on Connect in the menu bar and complete the form. Be sure to check the box that says subscribe. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.